Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, family. You are loved and appreciated. Well, good evening. Yes. Welcome to Real Life Transformation Center. Real life, real love, and real lessons where the things of God are made real. Um, so since Don and Charlene, we came to give you a little kingdom push. Um, this is our Sunday night. We uh, try to connect every Sunday and every Tuesday just to make sure we keep um, ourselves transformed, renewed. We've been talking about transforming of the mind. So we wanted to go back um, on a topic that we were talking about, right? Yeah. Distraction and title of it is full of trust and free from distraction. So that yeah. is what we're going to be talking about. So, so go right ahead, DJ. Full, full, you see. said full of faith and free of distractions. Yes. Because there's so many distractions that are going on right now. We know what's happening in the world today. And it's so easily to be distracted. But as God instructed us in the scriptures, don't look to the right, don't look yes. to the left. Just keep our eyes on the author and finish of our faith, which is Jesus. There's a lot that's going on. It's easy to be distracted, uh, but we're determined to stay focused, stay yes, full of faith. Because on the news, if we pay attention to the news, <laughs> I mean, I do watch some of it, or, or not really watch it, but I'll pull up my iPhone just to know what's going on in the world. But I don't need to know too much. That would be a distraction or cause my faith to become diluted. I want to stay full of faith, free of all of these distractions. We know what God has promised us. We know that we have a bright future. The world is dark right now, but our future is bright. Yes. And uh, we just need to hear from God. And, uh, you know, uh, that still, uh, you know, the Bible speak about being still and know that I am yes. God. And we just want to, you know, be still in our inner man and let God speak. Let's get directions from him, not from the news. Yes. Yes. I do not want, I mean, it's good for us. And we talked about that before you guys, it's just when you're constantly bombarding yourself with, um, the noise of the world, you become what you think about all the time. So if you constantly are thinking about how bad things are, then you become that, what you're thinking about. Remember what's impressed is expressed. So what you put on the inside of you in abundance comes out of you. So we want to really just be careful. So we're just going to encourage you tonight about um, being free from distraction. So um, want me to start? Uh, well, I mean, we, uh, how do we just go? Yeah, go on? ahead. You All go. right. Yeah. No, you said you want me to. I thought you were ready to go. So. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I just look at the scripture uh, in Mark uh, chapter 11 where I talk about have faith in God. And one translation, I believe, or on the margin of the King James, it talks about having the God kind of faith. And we know the God kind of faith speaks. God yes. speaks. You know, have faith in God. For verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou yes. cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He saith or continue to say. Yes. So what are we saying? You know, in this time right now, what are we saying? Are we believing the report of God? Are we believing the report of the Lord? Are we believing the report of the news? And so right. that's what I'm talking about. Don't be distracted from what God is doing, what he's saying in this time. And it talked about the God kind of faith, the faith that speaks. I think about how Jesus stood up uh, uh, on the boat and he began to speak to the winds and the yes. waves. He spoke to the storm. He said, peace, be still. It appeared to only be a word, but the disciples recognized it was more than a word. They realized that the winds and the waves laid down and obeyed Jesus. He yes. spoke the word. Speak the word only. He said, uh, uh, he spoke to the ones. He told them to uh, be still and a great calm. You know, the Bible says there was a calm, a, a peace that came over the ocean. Everything just still. And they were amazed. They were wondering what manner of man is this? Yes, that absolutely. even the winds and the waves, they do obey him. And so what I'm saying, that's the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith speaks. And so what are we speaking? We're faced with a storm today, you know, with uh, this COVID-19, this pandemic. We're faced with this storm, with the riots on the street. And our country is probably will never be the same. Right. But my point is, you know, what are we saying during this time? You know, we speak into the storms because Jesus said everything that he did, we can do also. Mm -hmm. You know, I thank God for the fivefold ministry gifts. The, uh, to some of you, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers yes. for the perfecting of the saints, that we're to be mature, we become a mature people so we can be busy, uh, do the work of the ministry. Yeah. And so, but my point is, we have to do the work in faith. Yes, amen. And I, I just, when you're talking about faith, I think about uh, Father Abraham, and I believe it's in John 4 and 20, and it says, um, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, mm. but he was strong in faith, 
giving gl glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he too is also able to perform. So he staggered not. Check yourself and make sure that you are staggering not. Because a lot of people are staggering because of the distractions. Right, at the promises of God. God yeah. has promises, but we right. begin to, to stagger, to draw back, to shrink in faith. Yes. But he said he staggered not at the promise of God, right. but he was strengthened in faith. Yes. Giving glory to God. You know, believing that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. And so, yeah, I was just going to mention, you know, even with that, when we say we stagger not at the promises of God, what is it that you're believing God for? Have you staggered? Have you kind of swayed away from speaking Psalms 91 over yourself or speaking not, God did not give me the spirit of fear, but of power, love and of a sound mind? Because you have to make sure that you're constantly uh, renewing your mind because your mind, your soul wants to go with what you feel. And that's what you don't want. And so we stagger not. Don't stagger. At, if God has promised you something, then he's going to perform it. But you got to give glory to God, even when things don't look like they're working, even when it looks like the word is not working. You still keep giving glory to God. That's what he did. He pretty much did touch zones, praise and worship until that manifestation came. So you got to continue to remember his goodness and remember what he did for you. And he saved you last time. He delivered you last time. He gave you a breakthrough last time. And he's going to do the same thing for you now. Whatever it is that you need, if you continue to stand and believe, he will continue to do what he promised that he would do. And God is telling us not to doubt, but believe. Yeah. You know, and we're not trying to be like we have super faith. Everybody faith is challenged. Yes. You know, I'm talking about this. No matter how great your faith is, trust me. And you know what I'm saying is true. Satan will come to challenge your faith. Yes. And it's a fight. The Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. And the reason it tells us to fight it because it is a fight. Yes. It can be a fight to stay in faith. And so we're not trying to be, you know, super saints and all that stuff because all of our faith is challenged yeah. or, or there'll be times when it will be challenged. But we're just saying that we have nothing else to stand on but the word of God. I heard someone say everything is going down mm -hmm. except the word of God. We can stand yeah. on the word of God. Yeah. And the Bible said, all of you getting, get understanding. And I like to say it this way. I heard someone say it. Get the word of God underneath you and stand on it. Don't let the enemy back you off of yes. it. Stand on the word of God. Even in the midst of these dark times, you may not have the answers, but our confidence and trust is in God. Our hope is in God. We yes. know God has the answer. And I just believe that there are some things God can not. I believe he's already, you know, everything is finished from the, yeah. from the uh he started from the end, That's right. not started yeah. from the beginning. Everything is already finished, but we have to receive it by the hand of faith. Yes. And so even in these dark times, I believe there are some innovative ideas that God is dropping from heaven that could cause us to overcome this onslaught of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And so because, again, we know that the world is a dark place and, hey, you know, it's going to get darker. But for the Christians, we have a bright future. And I just believe God in the midst of all that we're dealing with, mm -hmm. our future is bright. Yes. Amen. I agree with you. I was looking up. The word distraction and it says um actions that move us away from what we really want or what mm. we really are setting out to do so actions those things that cause you to move away from really your destiny that's what i thought about it i thought about hmm what are those things that's causing you to move away from it is it worry is it self-doubt is it unbelief you know what are those things that's causing you to move away to pull you away. Oh, it's on Facebook because you're on Facebook all the time. Oh, it's, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all of those things that distract us and that, oh, I want to watch this program. And no, you don't have time to be watching no program. <laughs> you want to start hearing from God and see what it is that he needs for you to do. So anything that pulls you away, there are actions that move you away from what you really want or just say your goal. And then what we want to have is traction. And the definition of traction is actions that move you toward what we really want. And I think Don gave a great description of the traction that we need for our assignment, which is to trust in God. We got to trust in him. We got to hold, hold fast to our faith because everybody's faith will be tested and challenged. Yes. Our hope is in God. Remember yeah. that. Don't ever forget it. And I mean, I don't believe you will, but sometimes at certain moments, in that particular instant, we can forget that fast. Yeah. But our hope is in God. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible said, cursed is man who put his trust in man. Right. Our trust is in God. And so no matter what is happening, 
you know, we still trust God no matter what it looked like because God is bigger than what we are experiencing. Yeah. And so, you know, but if you just trust God, he can bring you out. He can navigate you to victory. And so, you know, I think about uh, the story of David and mm -hmm. how this giant, again, there's a giant in the land and he's defying the armies of God. Yeah. But Joseph, who just trusted God, he wasn't out trying to be a big success or somebody special. He was on the backside of the mountain feeding David. sheep. David. Mm -hmm. uh, what did I say, Joseph? Yeah. Okay, thank you for correcting me. What <laughs> Joseph was David? <laughs> Thanks for correcting me. Y'all wasn't going to trust nothing else I said, you know. But it, it was David. Uh, he just, you know, wasn't trying to be nobody big or nothing special. He was just being obedient. He was being faithful with his assignment, feeding these sheep on the backside of the mountain. Yes. But there was a giant who was the champion of the Philistines who were defying the armies of the living God. Right. And we, you know the story. I won't go through the whole thing. But David stood up one day and said, no, we're not going to take this. And he began to speak some words. The Bible talked about the God kind of faith, yes. the, the faith that speaks. He began to speak. You know, he knew that he trusted in God. He trusted God. His hope was in God. He even, mm -hmm. I think I'm paraphrasing. He says something to uh, uh, Goliath how Goliath trusted in his sword and his spears and, and his his his, uh, his armor, his mm -hmm. uh, shield. And he said, but I trust in God. But yes. he pulled out a, a sling and a rock, but still his trust was in God. Yeah. But God gave him a sling and a rock to defeat Goliath. Yeah. God gave Moses a staff to bring down the government of Israel. Yes. What did God give you? Mm. What is that staff? What is that sling or that rock? What did God give you in this day and time that could take authority over what the enemy is trying to do? And so, you know, again, but faith speaks. And so, yes. again, whose report will you believe? We need to begin to declare what God has told us. Yeah. And I like how you said faith speaks. You keep speaking. It says, call those things that mm. be not until they become what you call them. So you have to continually release words out of your mouth yes. that are for you and not against you. As soon as you begin to start talking doubt and unbelief and worry and all of the things, oh, my gosh, this is happening, that's happening. We know it's happening, but you don't have to give confirmation that it's happening. You right. need to actually speak against it and speak words of faith so that you won't get sucked in with everybody else. So we are speaking spirits, and that is how we release our faith. We release yes. it by speaking. That's how you release your faith. If you want a situation to change, you're going to have to speak it out of your mouth, right? Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those that eat it shall... What is it? Those that Those love, that love it, it shall eat, eat the, the fruit, fruit thereof. thereof. So you have control in your mouth. So be careful what you shoot out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, again, when we talk about this, we're talking about not being distracted, but being full of uh, faith. Yes. And uh, well, how you said free of distractions. Free of distractions. And so that's yeah. the whole point, being free of distractions. Don't allow anything to come challenge you to where you give so much attention to it. I like the definition that you read about distractions. Because any there was one thing, and when you re was reading that definition, I thought about how there's something that you want to do yeah. that is a distraction to right. what you're called to do. Yes. And so don't be distracted. What has God called us to? That's Again, good. the fivefold ministry gift was to perfect the saints. We're the body of Christ. The body was one body, but there's many members. And I like to say it like this. If there's one body and many members, then there's many gifts that God has set in the body. Yes. And so what is your gift that you can bring to this planet? That would be an answer uh, for humanity because yes. all of creation is groaning, waiting to see the manifestation of the sons of God. You are a son of God. And so but we're, the world is waiting to see it. And, you know, I understand the first thing that Jesus was motivated, what drove him was love, yes. he, the love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His motivating factor was love. Yes. And then if, if we know that he died. He gave his he gave his body. He gave his life. To redeem the church and the bible said if jesus died to give you to bring salvation he gave you this for free it didn't cost you anything what else will he withhold from you i'm paraphrasing again Amen. and so i mean there's we've been delivered from the devil we've been delivered from all of his demons and all of his cohorts you know uh there's no situation that could come along that god cannot deliver you from he's already planned a way of escape even for this what we're dealing with now in this time this virus God has already planned a way of escape. Yeah. And so my point is, let's trust God. What is God saying to us right now? How do we combat this thing? What do we do? You know, what I'm saying is don't just give in to the circumstances. We just continue to trust God. Yeah, well, and I think the problem is we always talk about the customized attack. Oh, There's wow. so many people that talk about what's going on, 
but we never, so we have a lot of faith for the attack. We got a lot of faith of what's going on around us, but when it comes to the customized escape, because God promises that he would give mm -hmm. us a way of escape. So we believe that there is a customized escape. Right. Just we, like there's a customized yeah. attack, there's a customized escape. Right. So if you don't build your faith up for customized escape, then you'll continue to have the customized attack because what you pay attention to, that's what you get. So I'm like, okay, Lord, where's the escape at? That's that's where I'm building my faith up. What is it that you want me I, to do? How do I get out of this? Because yeah, there is an yeah. escape. Yeah, because there is. There's an escape now. We got to spend time and figure out what it is that he wants for each and every one of us individually. Yes. But there is a way of escape. So we want you to build your faith for the escape versus the attack. The attack is a given. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, <laughs> but God delivers us out of them all. See, there's many things that are going on around us, but there also is a way of escape for every situation that you're in. Right. Amen. Right. And so you said many are the afflictions of the righteous but God shall deliver you out of them all. Yeah. So all means everything. Every, Every attack that could ever come against you, God has will deliver you out of them all. And then it says, uh, uh, a man that's born of a woman is of yes. a few days are full of trouble. But yeah. then it says, a man that's born again, overcome them all. Yes. You know, many are the affliction of the righteous. But, you know, God didn't stop there. You know, what I'm saying is, no matter what you're afflicted with, no matter what's going on in the world today, God has promised to deliver. Yeah. And so, again, our trust is in him. It's not in what we see or somebody's limited understanding. You know, we haven't found a vaccine for the virus. We work on this work. God already has something for it. And so, you know, one of the things I look at, just like when we eat our food, you know, God has told us to bless it. You yeah. know, and one of the scriptures I love to use, blessing my food. Thank you, Father, for taking sickness and disease from the midst of me. Thank you for blessing my bread and water. Yeah. And I believe that's good enough. If we've been to speak the word of God and believe it, if there was any sickness and disease on it, I believe God could take it away from the midst yes. of you. I believe God can bless your bread. He can bless your water, even in these times that we're in. I believe we talked about living in Goshen when the death angel, angel passed over the children of Israel, when everyone else was dying. I believe, and that's what I declare right now. We're in Goshen right now. Amen. We're in a safe place where we're under the wings of God. Psalms 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his feathers. Yes. Under his wings, you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Notice it said his truth, yes. not someone else's truth, not the world's truth, but his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Yes. You should not be, uh, talk about the pestilence that walk in the darkness yes. and the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Yes. A thousand may fall at his side and 10,000 at his right hand, yes. but it shall not come near you. And so people are dying all over with this COVID-19. Uh, and, you know, you know, yeah. I just, my point is we don't want to take that lightly because people have died. People have lost loved ones. People are sick. People are isolated. We know it's real and we're not making light of it. I just believe God's word is bigger than all of our problems. And so, you know, again, faith, full of faith, free of uh, of uh, of uh, distractions. distractions. Yeah, I was um, also and um, you guys are familiar with this Hebrews 12 and 2, 1 and 2, but I'm going to read it in a slightly different translation because I want you to see something. It says, therefore, since. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance or every unnecessary weight. And that sin, which so readily clings to and entangles us and let us run with patience, endurance and steady and active persistence, the appointed course of the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So you see that all of the distraction that's there is telling us to strip it off, to lay aside every weight, whatever weight that's on your shoulder right now, God is telling you to lay that aside. Matter of fact, he tells you in the scriptures to cast all of your cares, all of your worries, all of your concerns, all of your anxieties upon me because yes. I care for you. See, that weight that you're carrying is too heavy for you. So God tells us to put it upon him because his yoke is easy, mm -hmm. right? His yeah. burden is light. So we got to roll all of that stuff upon you. Well, what about if it keeps coming to you and it keeps coming to you? It keeps coming to you. Every time that worry, that anxiety, whatever it is comes to you, then you roll it upon him because yes. it says roll it upon him. 
He wants it because you can't carry it. When we carry it, that's where we begin to start having challenges. When you're carrying too much of the weight of the world on your shoulders, then you begin to start being depressed, frustrated, angry, all of those emotions that actually take away from us versus um, give life to us. So, or adding to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's not a blessing. God wants us to live under the blessing, not under the curse. And we look at what's happening in the world today. This is a result of the curse. Yeah. And this is what I like about God. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that yeah. draw men unto repentance. It's God's goodness that draw men unto repentance. And I look at, you know, how, you know, we've been instructed as a church to bring heaven to earth. Right. Jesus said, when you pray, pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, bringing mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven to earth. Right. God is saying, bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. We're to pray that earth, the, the kingdom of heaven comes to earth. And what we have been doing in the past, we've been trying to get earth to heaven. But God is saying, bring heaven to earth. Jesus said, when you pray, pray that thy kingdom come. And so what I'm saying is this. When we look at the, you know, the goodness of God, the kingdom of God, Jesus talked about when he cast the demons out. He said, if I do it by the finger of God, he explained to you that the kingdom of God has come. And so he's taking authority over the wickedness down here in this world yeah. because there's no wickedness in heaven. But he's telling you that is by the kingdom of God. The kingdom right. of God has come. And so I'm tying that in with the goodness of God. When you could take authority over sickness and disease, when you when Jesus spoke and the eyes of the blind was open, the ears of the deaf was unstopped or the deaf was unstopped. And when he began to raise the dead and cast out demons, that was by the finger of God, the spirit yes. of God, showing you that the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God has come and it's in power. And yes. a lot of times we haven't experienced the power. We've been churching, but we haven't been experiencing the power of God. And if you're not careful, you can become disillusioned. Wondering because uh, I mean, I'm not just talking to myself, but has anybody ever thought about there's got to be more to this church thing than what I'm experiencing? And maybe it's because you experience church and not experiencing kingdom. Right. And I'm talking about like, you know, there's a, a function of the church. The functionality is to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth, that we're to bring God's government to this earth. Right. Jesus came with a government on his shoulders. He wasn't trying to get out of here. He was trying to bring a change right here in the earth realm. The Bible said the heavens belong to God. The highest of heavens belong to God, but the earth he has given to man. Yes. Earth belongs to us, not to Satan. So the kingdom of God should be rising up down in this earth realm, not the kingdom of darkness. But we look around us and all we see is darkness. I'm, and I understand it's going to get darker. But while yeah. we're here, we should be sharing our light. We should be sharing our light by how? how. How do our light shine? When you can speak to the storm and the storm will obey you. When you can uh, uh, c command demons to come out. People are demon possessed. And I'm not trying to get all far fetched. I'm talking about when you see these people are a lot of times not in their right minds, you know, uh, s suffering some stuff that we give uh, medical labels to. Right. And, and, you know, things like this cutting kids or cutting themselves and some adults are cutting themselves, things like that. These are the spirits that would need to be taken authority over. Right. And we uh, we're blood washed, blood bought. We have the power. Jesus said all the things that he did, we can do also. But that's bringing the kingdom to earth. You know, Jesus never preached with a microphone. Jesus not, never had a television ministry. He never had a radio broadcast. He never, I heard someone say, he never hung a fly in a barbershop, but he started healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons. And after a while, you even hear the Pharisees saying, the whole world is going after him. Why? Because they saw something he wanted. He bought the kingdom of heaven to earth. Right. That's our job. We're Amen. supposed to do the same thing. There was one Jesus. And when he left, now he left his body. There's many Jesus is on this earth. And the fact that in the, in the form that we could take authority, he'd given us power. He'd given us his name to transact yeah. business in. This is what we're about. And so what I'm saying is, this, you know, don't be distracted. This is our assignment as a church. Don't be distracted. Be full of faith. Amen. And full of trust, trusting in God. He has you. He has you in the palm of his hand. I know that it might not look OK for you right now. But know that God has you in the palm of his hand. There's people that have lost jobs. Yeah. There's people that have lost loved ones. And it's a horrible time if you really think about it like that. But know that God still has you in the palm of your hand. And that's where that trust comes in. Yeah, That trust comes in, you guys. No matter what's going on around me, it says, for we look not at the things which are seen. Because that the, th the things that are seen are subject to change. They're temporary. But I look to, unto him, him, the author and finisher of my faith. 
him the one that causes me to be able to see beyond my eyes. Yes. You know that we have to be able to do that because if you keep looking at what's around you, you're going to be in trouble. You are going to be depressed and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I need to get saved again. But you can't do that. You got to, um, I mean, I, I trust him. I trust him with my life. I trust him everywhere that I go with my life. You got to have that kind of trust that knowing that he hasn't brought you this far to leave. And I love what no, you said it, about the kingdom. Yeah. You because, know, because I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, because we need more of that to manifest. We need more. While Jesus we're came to bring yeah. power. Paul said, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, yeah. but in demonstration and in with power, power. Yeah. and much assurance that you knew what manner man stood among you. And that's how it's supposed to be today. Our preach is not supposed to be with enticing words of man's wisdom, right. but in demonstration and in power. Jesus demonstrated the power of God when he was on the earth. And what I'm saying is, I thank God for all the pastors. I thank God for the churches and things that we've learned. But I believe we're shifting gears because right now we're in the midst of church growth. The Bible spoke about how when the church was persecuted, right. it grew all the more. Yes. And it's being persecuted today and we're growing. And but what I'm saying is talking about the power that, that should be in the church. Yeah. You know, this uh, we, we talked about the power that Jesus had, this, this power, this love of God, this goodness of God that draw men to repentance. When they see people getting set free from all these bondages, you know, from alcoholism, from drugs and you know, wayward kids coming back home and people coming back and repenting. Get, it'll get people into the kingdom. And what I'm saying is, but it's the goodness of God that I believe that comes through these demonstrations of the spirit of God. Yeah. And we should be demonstrating this, this type of work in the house of God. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is how many have gone out to church service and, and I'm not knocking it, but have seen illustrated sermons. Yeah. I've never said, well, I'll say it like this. Jesus did have some illustrated sermons, oh, yeah, but absolutely. they were the real deal. They were authentic. He didn't imitate anything. When he said blind eyes being open, the eyes were open. He wasn't trying to show you, here's what happened in the Bible. Jesus said that the Bible is written because of the things that he did. He wasn't imitating anything. It was the real thing. Like Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell said, ain't nothing like the real thing. Yeah. Thank God for illustrated sermons, but I want to see a real illustrated sermon, not an imitation one. I want to see one where someone say blind eyes being open and uh, deaf ears on, you know, be unstopped and you know the tongue be loosed and the dead is raised and the demons are cast out and people are sitting up, uh, you know, uh, uh, clothed, and, clothed right and in their right mind. Yeah. I want to see some real power in the church. I don't want to see no more imitation sermons, no more illustrated sermons. I want to see the real thing. I don't know about you. That's Maybe that's just me. But the kingdom of God is power. I want to see the power. The power is... We could bring the power back to the house of God. Well, and um, and just to really think about when you say it's growing, it's expanding because we haven't been able to go out into church necessarily. So this church right here should be spending more time with him so that you can get instruction so that you can be the light in the midst of a dark world. So you don't have to wait till you go inside a building and lay hands on somebody and they recover. So you should be getting with your manufacturer so that you can get and do with power so that you can begin to do those kind of things, those miracle signs and wonder. That's if you want that type of the kingdom operating in your life. Well, right? That's all I want. Anything else is not <laughs> worth it. That's yeah. what I want. I want the kingdom of God. Because, you know, we used to teach the Holy Spirit class and we used to talk about raising the dead. And people were like, we we're like, how many of you want to raise the dead? And uh, they were like, mm -mm. <laughs> So, but, but we want to see everything that Jesus did. That's what we want. We desire to do that. That's why we study and build our faith for those type of actions. So it, it, it's the power of God. Yeah. I don't want to see nothing else less than the power of God. Amen. And again, like you said, even when we're in the buildings, the Bible said that water's issued out. Yes. We're out of the sanctuary now. Now let the waters keep rolling. Let's go ahead and touch the lives of other people. That's where real church growth began. Right. Jesus did miracles out in the hedges and highways, out in the streets, not behind a pulpit. He did miracles. He might have preached behind the pulpit, but then he stepped out and he began to do miracles, signs and wonders. And I believe that's where we talk about churches being in the we're in a church growth right now because we're out of the sanctuary. We're in the hedges and highways right now where the people are. And I believe God can meet him right there. And, you know, but it'll bring people to God. It's the goodness of yeah. God. Yeah, well, you go, in. you get filled up. Like you should get infused um, at a house of worship, but then you should be loaded, locked and loaded 
double barrel, ready to go out and begin to start doing the work that God has commissioned you to do. Uh, and you should yeah. be good feel about home too. Absolutely. You know, my, here's no, my, you here's my point. You know, now we come together. Yeah, okay, I believe absolutely. we need to come together. But you you need to have a personal relationship absolutely. with God too. Absolutely, it's home. the only way. And so, you know, it, it, it both of them, you know, yeah. at home with God, personal. And then when we come together, how we come together until we could actually sit back in the sanctuaries together, yes. whether it be like a drive-in movie. I heard somebody talk about that. You know, I, I know there's one another church where they're having service out in the parking lot, the pass yeah. out the platform out there. People are driving up in cars and bringing yeah. people with them, sitting in the cars while they. So I mean, the, the way we do church may yeah. have changed, but church is not open until Jesus come back. That's until right. the, the until the uh, church is raptured. We haven't been raptured yet. And Amen. so, well, anyway, you know, that's all I got. And Amen. That's all we got. We're done. Thank you guys for joining. I saw, hey, Kay, hey, it's good to see you. We're still in agreement was for a speedy recovery for you. Amen. Definitely interceding Amen. for you. Hey, Dodie, nice to see you. Hey, How are you doing, Dodie? Yes, you're loved and appreciated. Thank you guys for joining. Um, we had started like doing Zoom afterwards, so mm -hmm. um, we're not going to do that today because we got some things to take care of, you guys. Sorry about that. But um, we are going to um, periodically do a Zoom call right after this. And then uh, Dodie will put the link in there. She did put it in there, yeah. but we're going to we got some things to do afterwards. But next time uh, and maybe Tuesday night, we'll do a Zoom call and then we'll have some Q&A and some just some connection time. If somebody wants special prayer, we'll put a Zoom link in there and then you guys can come connect with us personally so we can kind of see you and uh, love on you a little bit. Okay. Okay. I see Kay said thank you. She's doing well. Okay. That's awesome. Right. Thank you, Kay. Well, God bless you. Yes. And enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes. We love and appreciate you guys. Bye. Bye bye.